Dobre and welcome to World Currency Collector. Today we're traveling to Central Europe to the beautiful country of Poland. Poland is a country rich in history which holds a very special place in my heart. In addition to collecting world currency, I'm also a genealogist and I've traced more than a dozen of my own family lines to Poland. The Republic of Poland is bordered by Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic Sea, Kaliningrad Oblast, and Lithuania. It's the ninth largest country in Europe and has been part of the European Union since 2004. The five banknotes that we're going to examine today have pick numbers P173A, through P177A in order from lowest to highest denomination. They're all made of paper and all of them feature a king on the front with important symbols on the back. And they're all dated 1994 and were released in 1995 by the National Bank of Poland. Examining these banknotes um, helped me to learn more about my own ancestral past and they make me feel closer to this amazing country. My ancestors were living in Poland when these kings ruled the land. They have stood in some of the special places that are really honored on these banknotes and to me these really bring history alive. Before we begin, let's go over a few pronunciation notes. This Polish letter, which looks like an L with a line through it, is pronounced like a W in English. The W in Polish is pronounced like a V in English. When examining Polish currency, it helps to understand the difference in the names of the denominations. When a banknote or a coin ends in a one, it's called a zloty, like this one złote coin. When it ends in a two, three, or four, it's called a zwalty, like this two zwalty coin. And when it ends in any other number, it's a zwalty, like this five zwalty coin. All of our banknotes today end in a zero, so they're all referred to as zwalty. The name of these banknotes translates to golden in English. The two zwalty coin is arguably the most important denomination in Poland. You need one of these in your pocket every time you want to use a public restroom. So always have these handy when you're visiting Poland. Now as my grandmother used to say, let's go to old country and see what we can learn about Poland. This is the 10 zwalty banknote, and it's dark brown and green in color. On the obverse in the center, there's a portrait of Duke Mieszko I. He was the first Christian ruler of the territories that would later become Poland, and is considered the creator of the Polish state. He is also the father of Bolesław I the Brave, who we will see on the next banknote. To the left of the portrait are the words National Bank of Poland at the top, along with the emblem of the Republic of Poland and Warsaw with the date of the 25th of March, 1994. We'll see this on all of today's examples. The coat of arms of Poland is an image of a crowned white eagle in a red field. The crown, as well as the eagle's beak and talons, are always golden. The heraldic bird is depicted with its wings and legs outstretched and its head turned to the right, in a pose known in heraldry as displayed. Heraldry is the design, display, and study of armorial bearings, known as armory and the term displayed describes the attitude and the position of the bird. Displayed birds face the viewer, have their legs splayed out, and the tail is completely visible. In the background are two rosettes inspired by the pattern of the floor of the cathedral at Gniezno. 
The front of the rosettes are painted in metallic gray as a security feature. Rosette is the French diminutive of rose. And just to the left along the rosettes, on the edge of the pattern, you'll see a microprint with the repeating vertical inscription of Republic of Poland. To the right of the portrait on the top, you'll find more microprint with the Republic of Poland above and the letters RP repeated behind the 10. Below that is a number, uh, below the number of 10 is a crown here, which completes when you hold it up to the light. This technique is referred to as recto verso, which refers to text printed at the same location on both sides of a piece of paper. You'll see this same crown on all of today's examples. Each has the denomination repeated four times, bordering the crown on each side, so you'll see it eight times when you hold it up to the light. Below the crown on the right, there's a plant motif that's found on Romanesque liturgical vessels. The serial number is repeated twice on the front. On the left side, it's in black ink, and on the right side, in red. In the bottom left-hand corner, there's a raised square symbol that you can feel when you, when you uh, touch the bill. It's used to help the visually impaired identify the denomination of the banknotes. Each of the notes we'll see today have a different shape. The reverse of the 10 note features National Bank of Poland across the top with the NBP abbreviation in the lower right. A denar, which is a silver coin from the reign of Mieszko I, is featured in the center. And in the background behind it, you can see stylized Romanesque columns from the Benedictine Abbey in Tignac. At the top, and also at the bottom of the note, in semicircles, you'll see the words National Bank of Poland repeated. And to the right of the dinar, here, you'll see a message that says, Bank notes issued by the National Bank of Poland are legal payment in Poland. In the field of the watermark, on the right-hand side of the note, is a guilloche pattern. Guilloche is an architectural ornamentation resembling braided or interlaced ribbons. Here is what the 10 note looks like when it's backlit. You can see the watermark of the Duke. Here is what it looks like when you shine ultraviolet light on the front. This Twane Zwaltich banknote is officially pink and violet in color. Other colors include pale violet, light pink, orange, olive, and beige. On the obverse in the center here, there's a portrait of Bolesław I the Brave. He was a Duke of Poland from 992 to 1025, when he had himself crowned the first King of Poland. He was a politician, a strategist, and a statesman. During his reign, he transformed Poland into a great country and significantly improved its image and rank within the European states. On the left side here, there's an outline of a Romanesque brick archway. And to the right of the portrait, over here, is a crown of oak from the Gniezno doors, a pair of bronze doors at the entrance to the Gniezno Cathedral. They were made about 17, I'm sorry, 1175. To the left at the bottom is a circle for the visually impaired. And the remainder of the images here match what we saw on the previous note, so I'm not going to repeat it. The reverse of the 20 features another denar silver coin, this time from the reign of Bolesław, the first the brave. And on the left side of the note is the image of the Romanesque St. Nicholas Chapel in, uh, I think I might be saying this wrong, but Cieszyn. Uh, it's a rotunda built in the 11th century. And on the right side here is the motif of a lion surrounded by a willow branch, which is from the border of the Gniezno door. This is what the 20 banknote looks like when it's backlit. 
you can see the watermark of the king. Here's what it looks like when you shine an ultraviolet light on the front. Notice the metallic paint on the front side of the bricks over the archway. This 50 Zwaltich banknote is officially navy and blue in color. It also features some light green, light purple, and beige. On the obverse in the center, guess what? There's another portrait of a king. This one is King Casimir III the Great. He reigned as the King of Poland from 1333 to 1370. He's best known for transforming Poland after it was ravaged by war. He formed the Polish army, introduced a judicial system, and a formal legal code. He also founded the University of Krakow in 1364. To the left, behind the emblem for the Republic of Poland, is a stylized Gothic rosette. And on the right-hand side of the portrait is the crowned letter K from the royal monogram on the door of the Wawel Cathedral. The Royal Arch Cathedral Basilica of Saints Stanislaus and Venislaus on the Wawel Hill, which is more commonly known as Wawel Cathedral, is a Roman Catholic church that was built in the 11th century. It was the coronation site for Pope John Paul II, and he held his first mass at this cathedral in 1946. This K is actually made of color changing ink as a security feature. And depending on the viewing angle, it changes from pink to olive green. And in the lower left-hand corner, there's a diamond symbol for the visually impaired. The reverse of the 50 features the eagle from the royal seal of Casimir III the Great. Below the royal insignia has an orb and a scepter. And in the background is a panorama of Kashmir over to the left, and on the right, the city of Krakow. This is what the 50 banknote looks like when it's backlit. You can see the watermark of the king. Here's what it looks like when you shine an ultraviolet light on the front of it. Notice the metallic paint in gray and blue along the right side bottom appears to be green and blue in this light. This 100 Zwaltich banknote is officially green in color. The front side has green, olive, light purple, and blue, while the reverse features dark green, olive, brown, and orange. On the obverse here in the center, there's a king of Władysław II Jagiewo. He was the Grand Duke of Lithuania from 1377 to 1434, and also the King of Poland from 1386 to 1434. He was born a pagan, converted to Catholicism, and later to Christianity. His sarcophagus resides inside the Wawel Cathedral. To the left of the portrait here, there's a decorative rosette with a gold metallic foil center. It's quite beautiful. Behind the rosette are stylized elements of Gothic ornamentation. On the right side here, there's another rosette, and this one has color changing ink. It changes from pink to gray green as you shift it into the light. And the bottom left features a cross symbol to aid the visually impaired. The back of the 100 has a shield bearing an eagle in the center from the tombstone of the king. And below it, there are two crossed swords with a helmet and a cape from the Teutonic Knights. On the left side of the note, there's the castle of the Teutonic Order at Malbork, more commonly known as Malbork Castle. It's the largest castle in the world as measured by total land area. 
It was built by the Teutonic Knights and became a part of Poland in 1466. Throughout its history, it served as royal residence for several families, and it was greatly damaged during World War II, but it's been restored and renovated as recently as 2016. Today, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and houses a museum, which opened in 1997. It's located about an hour's drive southeast of Gdansk in north-central Poland. Here is the 100 banknote when you backlight it. You can see the watermark of the king. And this is what it looks like when you shine an ultraviolet light on the front. This is the 200 Zwaltic banknote, which is officially yellow and olive. It also features several shades of brown on the front. The back is officially brown and olive. Here in the center, there's a portrait of Sigismund I the Old, who reigned as the King of Poland and also the Grand Duke of Lithuania from 1506 until 1548. He was a patron of the arts and he invited Italian artists to Krakow to promote the Italian Renaissance period. He also participated in the rebellion of Lvov, known as the Chicken War. And that situation is too complex to explain to you here, but I encourage you to check out the history of the Chicken War if you'd like a few laughs. To the left of the portrait, there is a fragment of a large wreath tied with a ribbon. Also on the front, there's a Renaissance cartouche hologram on which, depending on the viewing angle, there's a large inscription NBP 200, surrounded by a rim and repeated small inscriptions NBP 200. Poland was the second country in the world after Kuwait to introduce a holographic security feature on a banknote. To the right of the portrait here is a drawing of a small ring, and it color shifts from pink to gray green when viewed from different angles. And in the lower left corner, down here there's an isosceles triangle to assist the visually impaired. On the back of the 200, in the central area here, there's an image of an eagle interlaced with the letter S in a hexagon, and this is from Sigismund's Chapel in Wawel Cathedral, which was built in 1519 to 1533 by Bartolomeu Berecci and financed by King Sigismund I the Old. It's a square-based chapel with a golden dome, and it houses the tomb of the king. In the background of the image behind the eagle back here, you'll see a fragment of the arcaded courtyard of Wawel Castle, which is located in the center of Krakow. The castle features an Italian-styled courtyard and represents nearly all ar European architectural styles from medieval, Renaissance, and Baroque periods. Today it houses an art museum and includes an important collection of Italian Renaissance paintings. And this is the 200 banknote when it's backlit. You can see the watermark of the king just like on all the other examples. Here's what it looks like when you shine an ultraviolet light on the front of it. In 2012, Poland, uh, National Bank of Poland started issuing new versions of the banknotes. Um, they look very similar to um, the 1994 series. This is the Sovereign series of banknotes. But you can kind of tell, I mean, there, there are a few minor differences. The, the new ones, um, which from 2012, like this one on the right, um, they tend to be a little more muted. Um, you can especially see that here in the, the 20 note. I'm sorry, let me reverse these for you. On the left is the 1994 version, and on the right is uh, this one was actually issued in 2016. Um, just similar, but different enough. Um, here's the 100 note. The one on the left is from 1994, and the one on the right from 2012. 
just a few minor differences, um, but they do look very similar. Although I don't have one in my collection to share with you, in February 2017, Poland released a 500 Zwaltych banknote. It's primarily gray, yellow, and blue in color, and the obverse has a portrait of King John III Sobieski. To the left is a coat of arms of Janina, and the right features a hussar cone. The reverse has a royal crest of the king with an image of an eagle from the palace in Vilanov, which is just outside of Warsaw, or what we know as Warsaw. With today's exchange rate in September 2017, this is essentially equivalent to a $140 US bill. You simply do not see these in Poland every day. Uh, you just don't see these used in transactions. I have to say that I've actually experienced this firsthand because I've just returned from a once in a lifetime chance to visit Poland and I was there for 13 days on vacation. I tried really hard to obtain a 500 Zwaltzik banknote. I was unable to find one. Uh, it's difficult to use high denomination notes um, when traveling around Poland. You, you have to go to the bank and actually um, try to break it down. In fact, uh, many stores won't even accept the high denominations. These 50s, 100s, forget about the 200. You're lucky if you can get somebody to break a 50. I mean, they, they really frown at you if you bring in high denominations. Um, really, you need to have 10s and 20s and the coins. Um, the 1, 2, and 5 Zwolte coins like we have here, that's really what you're paying for almost everything with if you're not using a credit card. Two of the highlights of my adventure were the National Bank of Poland's Museum of Money and the Royal Castle's Numismatic Cabinet. Both are located in Warsaw, or Warsaw, and I highly recommend visiting them if you're in Poland. The Museum of Money features an entire history of Polish banknotes and coins and shows the minting process, including many examples of rare specimen notes, and they have an entire room dedicated to security features with an educational section on detecting counterfeit banknotes. And in the vault downstairs, you can see hundreds of solid gold coins from around the world and even lift up your own solid gold bar. They won't let you take it with you though. I tried. The numismatic cabinet on the top floor of the royal castle, which you'll need special permission from the museum to enter, features hundreds of ancient gold and silver coins from around the world. Some are reproductions, but they do have many that are authentic. And if you plan to visit, keep asking the docents until somebody understands your request. Most of the volunteers at the Royal Castle do not speak English, nor do they know what the numismatic cabinet is, even though it's on the map. Persistence is the key here. Eventually, somebody will understand what you're trying to do, and if you're lucky, they'll escort you up the stairs to see this very impressive collection. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed our journey today over to the beautiful country of Poland. We're going to see you next time right here on World Currency Collector. Dziękuję!